Jeanette Castagnon. I'm the horticulture agent with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. I am over Midland and Ector counties here in West Texas. And today I was fortunate enough to tour one of my master gardeners' gardens. So when you think of West Texas, you definitely think of a desert and not a lot of color and whatnot. And today, um, Emmy Olmschneider let me take a tour of how she turned a little piece of desert into her own oasis. Food, water, and shelter are three main components you need to keep in mind when setting up your backyard oasis for food, for wildlife and other insects that we have. Here is a small bird bath with rocks in it so the butterflies can perch on the rocks and have a safe way to drink some water. We also have blue mist here that is completely covered in monarchs. As you can see, they're flying everywhere. There's a little bit of a salvia and some turkey cap. All three of these are amazing for pollinators. October is a really big time for monarchs to be migrating, so it's really important that we set up stations for them to rest, have some nectar, have some water, and continue their journey. Persimmons are also great, and when they burst and rot, the butterflies love to feed on these, as well as other insects. As you can see here, leafcutter bees have fed on this, and now they need somewhere safe to overwinter. So this is dead chicory stems. Um, as you can see, it is hollow in the center, and this is a great place for those leafcutter bees that just ate that entire shrub I showed you to overwinter. Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't realize when it comes to fall gardening is a lot of their spring um, plants are dying and they want to take them down, but a lot of insects and birds actually feed on those dead seed pods, and a lot of insects overwinter in the dead tissue. So. If you want to be very uh, conscious to our insect friends that are helping um, keep our e ecosystem going, um, save your dead plants. <laughs> Here is some more dead wood and this is also going to be a great place for a lot of insects to overwinter and survive. Here we have a lot of sunflowers. All of these are voluntary sunflowers. Emmy did not seed any of these so that was just nature planting the seeds for her and she has this great little lush garden here of all sunflowers. She has a small supplementary feeder here for some hummingbirds and if you look close enough you can see that it's just buzzing with life. So many honeybees are having a great time and pollinating this. Um, we also have a little bit of rosemary right here which does really well in our area. Passion vine is a beautiful native vine with a showy purple flower. It is important to our area because it is the host plant for the Gulf Coast Fritillary. Make sure not to leave out shrubs in your garden. This is a beauty berry and it's a great source of food for birds and it has a really beautiful bright colored berry. This is a rainwater harvesting system that has a perforated PVC pipe that runs through the ground into this part of her garden. It is important to water your ground as opposed to watering your plants on top of the ground. This way the water is stored better. And this very special type of rainwater harvesting allows Emmy to grow plants that typically would not do as well in our area. This is frostweed, which typically does better in East Texas. But thanks to Emmy's very special rainwater harvesting, she is able to grow it here and it is doing great and blooming and is providing lots of pollen and nectar for all of the little insects. 
And that's about everything we have to share with you today. A big thanks to Emmy Olmschneider here for letting us have a great look at all of her garden. Well, you're welcome and come back again. Thank you.